Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Thursday, November 17th, around 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2022. Did you know yesterday was America's snowiest November 16th on record? Well, now you do. The big story. Visibility will drop to near zero in parts of New York State, getting hammered with lake effect snow. Keep calm. It's boom time. The heaviest snow forecasts keep increasing, now up to two feet expected at lower Michigan's ski areas, and over four feet may paralyze some areas in Buffalo and Rochester. And here you can get live updates on what is going on with those totals. And it's also going to be cold. Minus 25 degree wind chills expected for Cheyenne and Laramie overnight. In western New York, the winter storm, here's the latest on the lake effect snow event. It's a nearly a whiteout. The heaviest snow through the city and greater Buffalo will fall Thursday night into Friday morning when snowfall rates could range between 2 to 4 inches an hour. There could easily be a foot of snow on the ground for regions directly under the lake effect band. By the end of the lake effect event, with snow showers continuing off and on through early Sunday, there could be 2 to 3 feet of snow on the ground in many regions. This is arguably a complex and long lake effect event, and it could have some severe impacts while the snow is falling. And with snow already falling across western New York, many flights are canceled. That's the case for the next two days, really. There are stations on the board here, then arrivals and departures, and that's the case for the next two days, really. There are a few flights that uh, are expected to take off tomorrow around 5 p.m., but all that's up in the air at this point. Again, the, the moral of the story here has been a lot of people have been planning ahead. So the folks that are getting out tonight either got different flights to get out ahead of the snow so that they weren't impacted to make a trip down. Yeah, Justin Sienski said, I've never seen anything like this where just all of a sudden all the flights have been canceled. Well, that's so nobody loses their life. Now, yesterday's was one of America's snowiest November 16th on record. A record for snow extent in the contiguous U.S. was broken yesterday. The data set only extends back two decades, but still, that is pretty snowy. And here we can take a look at the northern hemisphere snow mass. It's been above average all season in record-breaking territory. Here is the current snowfall analysis from the last 48 hours. Some areas picking up three feet in western Wyoming. But you can see the lake effect bands already building up as more snow is coming. And no one's bumming. So just in the... Through the weekend, let's go through Saturday here. You can see those bands picking up. They're going to continue to get heavier and deeper. And so four feet or more is pred predicted in these bullseye zones with heavy lake effect snow in Michigan as well. So heads up, Michigan, you're going to be dumped on. And then the late term, the late forecast here through Dece the beginning of December shows heavy snow all the way down the Sierras, Holy man, the Cascades, this is a, could be a record-breaking year for snow. All-time records being smashed. And can you imagine the spring runoff? Epic. Seismic update. We've got a 4.9 kicking off at Port McKenzie in Alaska. I don't know why they have a tsunami warning here. Probably no tsunami happening there. The Mentone, Texas quake is offering dozens upon dozens of aftershocks. We have a quake up in Idaho, 3.4, nothing significant. And all is pretty normal across the country worldwide. Volcano news update, nothing spectacular here. We have some new volcanoes creating a little havoc. Capahue in Chile, Argentina, new eruption affected local airport. You can see the ash there covering this plane. Clearly, they have to clean that off. And San Miguel volcano in El Salvador. Small explosions yesterday were quite picturesque. Nothing to worry about there. Space weather news update. The sun is embarrassingly quiet and blank. Let's take a look at the latest HMI intensity. Not quite intensity at all. Remember, we are in the two years of solar max now, and it is a solar embarrassment. Barely, the, there's a few pinpricks here in the form of a plage and one sunspot here that's turned around that has any potential for creating any flares whatsoever. So pretty weak solar max. Now let's take a look at the coronal hole analysis. We have a massive coronal hole, number 46 here. 
in that region that is now earth facing. So the next two days, this stream is going to be lasering towards earth and will reach us here this weekend. And that means potential geomagnetic storm. Now, let's take a look at the detailed forecast and they're predicting that to occur the 19th into the 20th there. So overnight could be up at KP5 for a little bit. So keep a close eye on the updates here at the channel to get the latest. Now, have you heard 10,000 mink are on the loose after an Ohio farm was vandalized? Pretty awesome. Vandalism freed thousands of mink at a rural Northwest Ohio farm, leaving an estimated 10,000 of the small carnivorous mammals unaccounted for Tuesday evening. And many local cats are also missing, I would imagine. Meow. Largest dam demolition plan in history clears the last federal regulatory hurdle. This is good news for the Klamath River in Oregon and for the fish that once ran freely up the river. Now, massive elk herd stampedes across Colorado in a stunning video. And every year, around the end of November, one of these videos comes out of large herds moving to the lowlands. And here is an example that is no different. Just some of the splendor that happens here in my backyard. And also, well, we have lots of food just walking around. So this is a great place to, and not a lot of people. Notice there in the distance how many houses there are. <laughs> and each one of those elk can weigh anywhere from seven to 1,200 pounds. It's a lot of meat. Hello. Delicious herd. So all the links will be below to everything we talk about. The gut microbiome helps social skills develop in the brain. New research in fish suggests that gut microbes can have a crucial early influence on the brain's social development. So if you feed your children GMO soy formula and not breast milk, you're a bad mama. What an amazing picture. This is coming from the James Webb Space Telescope. The two bundles of stars form shortly after the Big Bang. <laughs> Offering long anticipated window into the origins of the universe. These charlatans just make up fairy tales. What you're looking at here is the classic Z pinch that is posited by the electric universe model. This is happening along a Birkeland current and this is where you would produce a star right at the Z pinch. So. Nothing new there. Earth can regulate its own temperature. Have you heard? Well, I knew that for decades. As a paleoclimatologist, there's something called natural climate variability that occurs on the planet where the oceans and heat release, and it's a constant struggle to regulate the temperature. But scientists have now confirmed that a stabilizing feedback on the 100,000-year time scale keeps global temperatures in check. No, it's not you. It's not CO2. It's the sun. Shut up, Al. Get in your hole. He must be up after his bedtime. T-Rex could have been 70% bigger than fossils suggest. According to a new study, the largest T-Rex ever to live may have weighed up to 33,000 pounds. There's no denying that Tyrannosaurus Rex was one of the biggest and baddest dinosaurs ever to walk the planet. But exactly how big could this ferocious dinosaur get? Well, in a new investigation, researchers attempted to answer just that question. And paleontologists from the Canadian Museum of Nature in Ottawa, Ontario, estimate that the largest T-Rex may have tipped the scales at a whopping 33,000 pounds, making it heavier than the average school bus, which weighs just about 24,000 pounds. Now, the scientists presented their findings on November 5th at the Society of Vertebrate Paleontology's annual conference in Toronto. So, now currently the largest T-Rex we actually have a skeleton of is called Scotty, which weighed 19,555. So this, the largest one, would be about, well, a lot, 70% heavier. Now, some mysterious footprints in Spain were actually made 300,000 years ago. This is amazing and maybe some of the oldest footprints of human-like creatures. Once thought to be only 106,000 years old and left by Neanderthals, 
The track's new dates suggest the prehistoric walkers in Andalusia were pre-Neanderthal and maybe another species altogether. Who exactly was living in Andalusia 300,000 years ago? Well, it could have been Homo heidelbergensis. And these human-type fossil footprints found two years ago in the southern Spain were once thought to be 106,000 years old and have been made by Neanderthals, but they're actually three times older, according to new research. So pretty fantastic developments coming up every single day. Now here is an old excavation from the 90s of one of those large basaltic moais. And I want to draw your attention to the hands and the belt and the buckle down at the bottom. And what in the world the relationship to Gobegli Tepe is with the hands and the belt and the buckle down at the bottom. These cultures are on opposite sides of the earth, thousands of miles apart, and are making very similar structures and carvings. There's even bas-relief motifs on the back of the Moai, as well as bas-relief motifs at Gobegli Tepe. And there's even a detailed analysis of Moai 156 and the excavation and the ancient, here's the ground level, 1914, and so on and so forth. So much to be learned. As the earth rotation accelerates, and the length of the day is faster than 86,400 seconds. You can see here the change in about 2016 as the earth rapidly began to accelerate. Now, it's not accelerating by much, just about a millisecond over that time frame, and there's nothing to get your panties in a bunch about. But the earth's wobble is increasing quite dramatically this year. And no one can explain it. The yellow line is, in fact, 2022. It's been saying in a tight loop like it always has, but it's beginning to unwind. So something is afoot on Earth as we head into the next magnetic excursion extraordinaire. Sperm count drop is accelerating worldwide and threatens the future of mankind. Well, I think the magnetosphere is threatening the future of mankind a little quicker than the sperm. Now, if you don't know, the Leonid meteor shower peaks tonight. I'm going to tell you about tonight, though. Now, this is a night where I was hoping for clear skies because it's the Leonid, Leonid meteor shower overnight tonight. It peaks tonight. Unfortunately for us, we've got a lot of clouds in the forecast tonight, so we're probably not going to see many of these uh, shooting stars, as you might call them, racing across the sky. But this is one of the more popular and also one of the better meteor showers that we see throughout the course of the year. This comes from the uh, Comet Temple Tuttle, that comet way away from us, but we get some of the debris from the tail to hit our atmosphere and create some pretty cool streaks across the sky. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Now get out and look up. Tonight might be a super burst. Now the Leonid meteor shower tonight could bring an outburst of up to 250 meteors per hour. I was out the other night. I saw at least five in a minute. And they are spectacular. Now, the Leonids can come in all different colors. Yellow, red, white, green. And they are quite quick. And they're going to peak tonight just a few hours after this video. In fact, two hours after this video is premiered in your region, they will peak. And that's going to be about 11 p.m. Mountain Time, 1 a.m. Eastern Time. And the Leonid meteor showers... Well, they might be spectacular tonight. There's no way to know, but tonight will be the night. And if it does occur for a short time, on Saturday morning around 1 a.m. Eastern, Friday night, uh, so actually it's tomorrow. Oh, my God. Well, go out anyway tonight, but it's tomorrow night, Friday night to Saturday morning, 1 a.m. Eastern, 11 p.m. Mountain Time. There could be up to 250 meters visible per hour. Yeah, I'm just confirming that it is Thursday. <laughs> so get out and look up. Now, if you don't know, Crestone's Thanksgiving potluck is this Sunday, November 20th, from noon to 5 p.m. It's at the T Road Brewing Company. You can bring a potluck dish or donate a turkey or even volunteer to help feed all the people. 
You can contact Nick Navarez, a good friend of mine, at 719-588-6421. It's going to be in Crestone on Sunday during Winterfest, where Lee and I will be out there. She's going to be selling some jewelry. I'm going to be giving out free cannabis, tons of it. Our new crop this year to the public in giving thanks to what our earth provides us. So go join us for an amazing event in Crestone if you're nearby and give a hand. And call Nick if you want to have a volunteer. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Hope you got something out of the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this video and be a hero. And if you want to support our work, please become a Patreon where you can watch everything we produce commercial free at one source. Patreon at Oppenheimer Ranch. And we love you. Be safe. See you in Crestone. Yeah.